All right, welcome back to the channel where we are building a video game from scratch using Love 2D and Lua. Yesterday, we got our character here respawning upon a death. We have it set to like a two second respawn. It should be faster than that, but what we're trying to do is get us to respawn at a specific X and Y, which is like a checkpoint. Um, I'm calling it a checkpoint position, and it's on our player class. And the idea here is we update a checkpoint position over time, right? So like as we move, it kind of saves like a checkpoint of our position. But if we are colliding with a square, it doesn't update that checkpoint so that we can respond there. But our checkpoint is getting reset um, incorrectly or something's going on. So we've got to figure out how to fix that. And... I'm going to also turn off the rendering for our uh, console, which I think is in our map. Yeah. So I'm going to turn that off so we don't print that up all the time. It just... Um, I don't like exactly how we implemented all of this falling stuff. It just feels messy to me. I feel like there was a better way to do it. I like that we can escape the fall, right? I like that. Um, I think just the implementation I'm just not so happy with. But it's as long as it's reliable, right, it'll be okay. Um, this is our first time making a game anything like this. So I'm, I'm starting to build up a sense of like, decent patterns and patterns that will end up screwing me over time and that'll get stronger as I build more things so um, I just realized we've got like a wrong pixel here on our on our flower we've got a pixel disappearing here we can fix that but I'm gonna leave us a little note for that so we don't forget and then we'll dig into trying to respawn our player at our checkpoint positions And I also, I want to make this flower animation actually transparent so that we can put the flower over any type of ground tile. So I don't think that'll be difficult. We would just have to make sure we draw this starting flower tile, um, the starting transparent flower tile on the above ground layer so that it can render above the ground floor. Then we just have to make sure we draw a ground for it to be on top of and then we can do this so I'm gonna say add flower anim to be transparent that'll be nice and then we could put flowers on water if we wanted to okay so let's let's see where we're doing this checkpoint position So we initialize it to be false, right? And then we're, we're just assigning our players X and Y into be this checkpoint position X and Y over a, a period of one second. So every second we get a new checkpoint. Um, but I thought I thought we were doing something where if we are colliding with a pit, that we wouldn't be doing this. Um, I don't see that that's the case though. Yeah, we, we aren't doing that. Um, there might be... Yeah, okay. So here, I guess, I guess this would mean that we aren't not, yeah, we aren't preventing our checkpoint update from being updated upon a collision, which, collision with a pit, which I thought we were. Well, yeah, it doesn't look to be changing, so that's a little weird. It might be under 
the map or something like that. Yeah, okay. Well, this is commented out. So it wouldn't be there. Oh, that's, yeah, okay. So that's where we were trying to change our player's position based on the checkpoint, okay. But I don't see why not, um, it should just be updating every, every one second. If we change this to be something much faster, like every 0.02, it should just be updating our checkpoint as we change it, right? So now we can see, yeah, it's not updating if we collide, but it does, oh, okay, okay. Um, I mean, I don't get why, why it's still only happening if we're not, um, we're really not doing anything else with um, checkpoint positions here. Yeah, that's the only time we're doing anything. This is confusing to me because this 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 makes it look like every 0.02 seconds, regardless of anything, we're going to be updating our checkpoint positions. But if we're colliding with a pit, um, we're not supposed to be doing that, and it's not doing that. But I don't see why it's not doing that, which is the issue. So if we see the collide with a pit here, okay, and then are we doing anything with pit count? I mean, pit count. Okay, so I guess, I guess what we have here is we are resetting our counter to zero. Oh, this is, okay, so this is where we're doing it. We only increment our counter if we are not colliding with any pit. Okay, that's where we're doing it. Literally just the one line, line above. So yeah, we first, um, if we're not in the graveyard, we're going to cycle through our pit count. We're going to cycle through our current maps.pits, and then if we're colliding with any pit... What up, Gustavo? How's it going, man? Then if, if our pit count is zero, meaning we are not colliding with any pits, then we're going to go ahead and increment counter by delta time. See, so this is... This also needs to be, if not self graveyard because we don't want to increment we don't want to increment our counter if we're in the graveyard because the counter is what is triggering our checkpoint positions so our checkpoint positions yo you tried assembly how was it <laughs> that is uh, that is valiant valiant effort yeah there's this game I, 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 I would say I really like, I'm only like 10 puzzles in, but it's a programming game on Steam, and it's in a fake programming language, kind of like Assembly, and it is like, it's the hardest game I've ever played. Um, I've, I've played many hours, and I have only beaten like eight levels, but um, I feel like I know what you're talking about, even though I, I haven't done exactly assembly programming. I'm trying to pull up a picture for you. I haven't done assembly, but this this game is similar to um, assembly. So if you can see the... Uh, can't even zoom in on it. There we go. Yeah, like this is the code. Oh my gosh. That's the code for this game which is similar to assembly, right? Like like very basic things. You only have a couple registers and 
very limited memory and stuff like that. But yeah, the um, I love seeing the stuff about um, what's it called, Roller Coaster Tycoon, because Chris Sawyer wrote that game in in assembly. So like, mad respect. Yeah, Lua is like baby talk compared to assembly. Okay, so we're in the graveyard. Okay, this looks pretty good. We didn't we didn't update our checkpoint um, once we were colliding with a, a pit or once we were in the graveyard. So we should be able to reset our position right here. Once we pass our graveyard timer, which we should um, make it one second or, or, or lower even, um, then we're going to trigger a reassignment of our X and Y to be the checkpoint position X and Y. And the checkpoint position X and Y should be one of the last safe spots we were standing. Now, it won't be safe from enemy entities, but it should be safe from a pit at the very least. Yeah, I mean... I think under the hood, most things are just talking in assembly, right? Like it's, but but just to do straight up assembly yourself, that's pretty wild. Yeah, because even like you can look at some C code and it and you can see how it maps to assembly. Like it kind of, you know, it's like one step above assembly. But then things get so complex so fast, and it's it's so hard. Like I used to think programming was like where you can come in and just read like three lines of code and know what that's doing. I'm like, oh, I know exactly what that's doing. And like technically you can see what it's physically doing at that one line, but how this variable interacts over time in a complex system, that, that's, that's the part that's hard to program and to keep track of in your head. So it, it is just so difficult. Dude, I don't know why I keep it's like wanting to record a macro. Every every everything I do, Vim is wanting to record a macro of it. But um, we just turned on this assignment of our player X and Y to be our checkpoint. So let's see if it restarts us to the last safe checkpoint. So if we wait here for a little while, our checkpoint will be down here, and then we die. Then we wait one second, and we should. Ay ay ay! This is the junk. This is the junk. See, why would it do this? It, it, it brought us back to the right checkpoint on the second fall. But on the first fall, it, it brought us back and then we flipped out and then it didn't do it. And then now it's just working. So it's, let's see if this one works. So like we have a checkpoint position up here. We're gonna fall in then it does that weird shit. So what's exactly going on here? And see, like, why did it do it? It it failed three times before it successfully left us there. So maybe we're not swapping our, our falling to be true or our... I don't see what's happening here. The only thing I could think of is the tween, the tween value. So, uh, we are doing this tween allowed false though. So when are we saying tween allowed true?
Okay, so if we're in the graveyard... Actually, if we've been in the graveyard for a certain amount of time, then we allow our tween to be set. Oh, you know what? We should... Well, I don't think that would matter to move this after we reset our position. I don't think that'll make any difference. But what's, what's strange is that we keep respawning back in the pit right upon that reset. Well, that time it didn't fail. See, that time it did. What the f... See, what's happening here? It sets us... It sets us to our checkpoint position for one frame. And then it... Then it whips us back to the pit for some reason. I don't get why it does that. The only thing I could think of is that it's it's the tween value in there, so... I don't know what to do here. Because I thought tween allowed is supposed to fix this. Um, but maybe we need a separate... Like, if we don't allow the tween here upon the respawn, does it fix the first fall? Yeah, okay, so let's see. We're never flushing this back to allowed, so... Well... That is strange. It fixed it. Okay. So... So I think it is the tween that's screwing it, because, like... We're not being pulled into the hole anymore because we manually put tween allowed to false, but if we trigger a fall we do get put to the checkpoint position. So something is just going wrong in the tween where it, it's wanting to respawn us and then we set our X position, but then our tween allowed is true, which then goes into our actual tween logic, which is right here. Nope. It is a... Timer dot tween. Right here. Okay. So we we need to do this only if see I thought tween allowed would fix it, but there's something else going on where if input list is zero, then if tween allowed Okay, so if we turn back our, if we turn back on our uh, tween allowed to be true upon a graveyard reset, but then we hold an input upon spawning, I think it'll fix, I think it'll fix this. Okay, yeah, see how it puts us, it puts us to our checkpoint position, and it doesn't snap us back to the pit. So if we're holding an input, it doesn't snap us back to the pit. So it is right here in the tween. Like it's, yeah, if we hold an input, it, it works as expected. But it shouldn't only work if you hold an input. Um, if input list is like, it's almost like we need like a a freshly respawned like if 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 we say something like this like um freshly respawned sounds so weird but if we say that we've got like we only do this tween if we're freshly if we're and we're not self self freshly respawned so um respawned there's got to be a better way to do this like 
it's just that for whatever reason the time the timer tween once tween's allowed just really does shift our player x to be the vx which is and that's what i don't get is like we shouldn't even be in this code loop because we're not colliding with any pits um i'm thinking maybe instead of this freshly respawned let's just print up pit pit count that should be global and we'll see if by the time we respawn from a graveyard if if pit count is equal to zero because it should be and if it's not we can either hunt down that bug or or do this based on a different solution so we'll see here let's 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 print up this pit count it looks like it's in our player oh we've got oh shit we've got we've got two pit counts uh the player one should work fine because they're calculated the same way all we do is test how many we've collided with and then increment um, and then we flush it to zero every frame at the beginning of the loop. So if we print up pit count here, uh, either in our player, yeah, we'd have to put it in our player because it's... Let's just do here love.graphics print. hit count and we're going to concatenate that with our actual pit count and then we're going to give it a zero zero for the top left of the screen it said pit count was nil That's because pit count was defined. I thought it was defined up here. No, it is not. Where do we define it? Okay. We need to define it up here. Okay. Okay, pit count zero. So look, I'm looking for pit count. Oh, wow, yeah. That's totally jacked. Yeah, see? Pit count should get reset. Um, now, okay, that does make sense. It's wrong, but it makes sense that we're incrementing this pit count. So we have to do, I say this because when we're doing our timer tween in our map class, we're, we're cycling through this pit count, and this pit count gets flushed to zero at the beginning of every loop, this is a different pit count, so we probably should have tried printing this one up. And if we're colliding with a pit, we increment pit count. So I, I was using pit count as a way of checking if we were colliding with any pit, because we can't just print up the boolean of, of a pit that collides with a player because there's multiple pits. So that's where pit count was coming in. Let's print up pit count here instead. And we'll put... And we'll just say that pit count... Should, we should not crash there, but we should still have our old pit count too. Okay, we need to declare our pit count up here again. Okay. 
We should have our old pit count also, which, yeah, we'll probably get in the way. Okay. Looks like the pit count in our player can go. I'm basically trying to determine why it thinks we're colliding with the pit still upon a death. So it's like... Oh, well, it does get reset. Oh, there it didn't get reset. See that? It still thinks we're colliding with the pit for some reason. I don't even see it flashing. Um, and then it got reset there, and then it fixed the problem. So maybe we just... And, and what's weird is we can't set... We can't touch this pit count because it's local to the player. Yeah, yeah it's local to the player class. Um, Cause what's weird is Where is the timer? It's in our map. Okay, so here... Okay, this is jacked up, man. Okay, so we flush our pit count, and then we go and collide with all of our pits against our player and if we are colliding we increment our pit count and then we're printing a pit count from the map class that should be this one so yeah the we collide once and since we flush it to zero we only ever see one there but it's not it's not getting changed here so i guess Maybe we need to say, I think it's a little jacked up that we, um, you deleted code and took you forever in assembly because you're learning malware analysis. That's wild. Cause yeah, I, I have a hard enough time following my own scripts here in Lua. I can't imagine looking at just a dump of assembly and trying to wrap your head around that. It's hard for me to to know where this issue's happening cuz we should only be tweening if we are colliding. But for some reason we are colliding even though our x position is supposedly not touching the pit. Now we do, this is really strange. <laughs> After five lines, hey, that's a valiant effort. But <laughs> dude, yeah, that's, that's disgusting thinking about that. Okay, yeah, so see what's what's really weird is if we print up the X and Y position, we do we do get sent to the graveyard. And then it gets sent to the checkpoint position, but then it gets moved back to the, the tween um, for the pit collide, and then it just fixes itself. Like Safe Fall is nil. I'm trying to see what else could be different, because I'm not seeing why it just randomly fixes itself. See, like that time it worked perfectly. And it was the same pit. That time it worked perfectly. So why why does some time not work? See, like that. What the heck? Yeah, and if you hold a directional input, it does fix it, but that's bad. I, 
<laughs> I can't tell if that was a intentional typo or not. So the checkpoint position is working. It's just that... Why does it flip us back to the pit, man? I think I... I, I don't know what is causing this. And, and the fact that it's not consistent... Is a little worrisome. Because we should be only tweening the player X and value. Like, this is the line that's, that's responsible for moving us. There if we're allowed a tween, but it should only be doing this if we're actively colliding with a pit. So, this is the map update, and when we do our player update, which order of operations are we doing this? Oh, you know what? We might have to trigger before... Yeah, we might have to trigger this stuff after our graveyard because our player X doesn't get updated till after our, our graveyard okay so it's like well let me see if that changes anything first okay so far so good Because the thing is, we weren't moving our player. We weren't moving our player. Uh, we were, we were, we were tweening our player's value to be the pit. Um, it still doesn't. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, this doesn't make sense still, <laughs> because at the end of the day, we were still having to collide with our pit. But we didn't update our player's x and y position. Um, now we're updating it before we check if we're colliding and now we're definitely not colliding because we just moved our X and Y to be a checkpoint position. So let's see if we can get it to crash again or if just swapping the order there did fix us. It looks pretty safe to me. I mean, well, okay. Because, yeah, so, like, our checkpoint, like, if we're up here, our checkpoint position gets updated every second or so, right? What the heck? It should be getting updated. What's going on? Okay, if we're not in the graveyard, okay, do we, yeah, and then we do flush our graveyard, right? And the pit count is zero, meaning we're not colliding with any pits. Then go ahead and update our, our checkpoint position, which, oh yeah, we are doing it like every second now. So, does our graveyard not get set to, no, yeah, we, we definitely do swap it, but why is it that our checkpoint position stops updating all of a sudden? not self graveyard and pit count is zero we don't ever really flush our pit count here yeah we don't ever flush our pit count so we have to do something like um, since this is in our player I think all we have to do is just make sure that we flush our pit count before we count how many pits we've got and then it should calculate our checkpoint even after death now this still works, but look how close we are to the pit because, oh, this is great. Yeah, our checkpoint position is now updating again. So yeah, ideally, you know, if we're up here and that was a last safe location, if we hurry up and fall in there, it updates too quick. But you see how we come, we get respawned like where we used to be at. So if we fall in, you know, from the left, we kind of get spawned from the left. We fall in from the top, from the top left of the pit, and we fall in that way. It should spawn us up at the top left. So that's kind of cool. And, and we're only saving the checkpoint position if we're not colliding with the pit. 
So anytime we get respawned, by definition, it should be not... Oh, wow, I just realized something, yeah. Look at how our feet... Yeah, our feet go up when our head should be coming down. Yeah, that's totally jacked. How long has that been wrong? Because, yeah, our feet should be the stable point, and we should dip downwards when we step. That is totally wrong. Let's fix that real quick. Because that would explain a lot of wonkiness. Player Atlas. See? This is weird. Our guy is flush with the floor here. Our guy is flush with the floor, so we shouldn't have our our feet lift off the ground like that. Our head should duck. Whoa, why is that so jacked up? Oi, 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 oi. Okay, the falling looks pretty good. I like that. But yeah, our feet. So like, look, our, our shadow on our feet. Oh, now it's working. What the fuck? Yeah, that's wor that's working now. Now our feet is flush with the bottom and our head is the one that's dipping. Okay, that's working. I swear the game's just screwing with me at this point. Okay, let's see if we can successfully escape a pit gravity pull. Oh my god. Oh, we can. And and it's Oh my god, give me out. <laughs> and it's not consistent, which I like. Like you can't you can't um, for sure get out of the grab. Oh my god, and I don't know how to... I don't know how to definitely escape. Oh my god. But I, I've seen me do it. Wow. And then, oh my gosh, but look at this. You can literally just walk right over it. If you walk fast, you just walk right over it. Oh, if you lean into it, if you lean into the pull, you can actually escape it. Well, yeah. Okay, so I think what we need to do is we need to trigger... Oh my gosh. Okay, this becomes... I guess we get to choose how we can kind of potentially avoid this. Because we don't want it where... All you have to do to not fall in the pit is walk straight over it. Because right now you can totally do that. And that's because we didn't want to trigger a pitfall as soon as you're in the middle of the pit. Because if we did that, then you could never escape the pit because of the tween values. So I think we need to... I think we need to tween... No, I don't know what to do. Because if you walk straight into it, you should definitely, you should definitely fall. But what if you're like one pixel off? Would you fall or would you get triggered? Would you get triggered to pull? I mean, we do get triggered to pull. Oh, and we're dead. We shouldn't respawn if we're dead, but that's okay. Yeah, dude. I totally get it. Here, I'll get you. I'll fund your, I'll fund your addiction there. I do got it. I'll have to make like a special add 500 button so that we can all just go crazy every once in a while. Okay. I like that you can escape. Um, but we also have to not render our character if we're in the graveyard. So we should handle that so that that is at least fixed. So let's go to where we render. looking for okay um this is in the player class and we have a graveyard so we're gonna say if not if not graveyard 
then we're going to go ahead and render us. And now once we die, we shouldn't see us in the top right, which is where the graveyard is. And we should probably move the graveyard to be a little further than just one pixel off screen, but um, we don't technically need to. And then what I want to do is we have to trigger... Now, yeah, and we could get clever with it. Like, we could only put pits in locations like this that, you know, you can't walk straight over. And if you try to walk, like, down and to the left, you see how I kind of missed it there? Like, I kind of did an L shape, and I missed it. So I don't know... <laughs> <laughs> What's the class? Yeah, I bet, dude. Are you you doing some like engineering or uh, elect electrical engineering class or something? Dude, yeah. I mean, if there is something to say about you probably could learn something from that class, but also you're a better gauge of if if that class is actually going to teach you anything right now. Engineering fundamentals, okay. Yeah. You can probably you can probably watch some Tashio Tempo. You could probably watch some Tashio Tempo while that class is going on. I would have to pay attention. See look at this. We got off again. See how our feet Oh, and then it fixed itself. What is going on? For whatever reason, now are... Oh, what the heck? This is so jacked up. So, like, look, if we're, if we're walking side to side, we bob our head up and down, and our feet stay the same. But if we keep tapping this, our feet come up instead of our head coming down. Like, what? Why does our feet go up here? It looks so wrong. Because our, our head should... Our head should dip down like it does here. But instead our feet are coming up. <laughs> Dude, I had to... Oh, hey, Soup. Good to see you. Yeah, do you like the, uh, the falling animation here? We've got... We've got some screwed up, like we can walk right over it. So we, we have to figure that out. Um, and we can walk right over it because we added where you can es potentially escape from the pit. So like it, if it pulls you in, you can still sometimes escape and that's what I wanted, but that allows us to walk straight over the pit uh, when that should not be a legal move. Or we make it a legal move and if you stop, you fall. I mean. I don't know, because I feel like if you're playing the game for the first time, you might sneak up on it and be like, what is that thing? And be like, oh, fuck, oh, and then it'll pull you in and kill you. And then you know it's a pit. And then you, you're not going to, you're not going to really voluntarily walk over it. You know, like you could walk over it, but you don't, I, I don't know. It's just something that, and then we're dead, dead. But yeah, Katron, I, I, I know what you feel because I took a, uh, I'm a film major and I was in this class for special effects and I've been doing special effects since I was like in elementary school doing like lightsaber videos and stuff. So like he had us in this program that I had been using for like a decade and I was asking him all these questions about it and he had no idea what was going on and it was so apparent that he had no idea. So I just switched my major after that class. I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and not learn from these people that I know more than. So like I, I switched my, my major to a theory major instead of a production major. Would you make a anti-piracy system? No, man. Um, this game is free, so you can't pirate it. That good luck pirating this game. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, you can do it, Katron. You can do it. Just stick it through. You'll 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 ace the final, right? It'll be easy. 
Okay. So just like how, you know, we can we can walk over this pit too. Um I don't know if I like that. I mean it, it bugs me, but I do like the ability to escape the pit. So maybe we can add uh something that a fall doesn't trigger if if you're holding more than two inputs. That way you can potentially fight your way out of the pit. Um, but I don't know if that will work. Let's go find where our pit proximity is, because that's where we're triggering the the fall. And see how we've got this fall timer? The fall timer is what is preventing us from falling right away. If we didn't have the fall timer, then we would just trigger a fall right away. So I want to see what this fall timer is getting set to. Oh, it's just a constant. Nice, dude. Hey, learn him up. Learn him up and then take his paycheck. Fall timer threshold. So let's, let's take this down a bit and see if we're able to uh, prevent walking right over it because, oh shit. Um, I think we need a combination of widening the pit proximity so that we track or, or so that we um, increase the amount of pixels that we can increase a fall timer for, but also decrease the fall timer. And if we find if we if we like increase the pit proximity then there's a total of uh six pixels that you could potentially get triggered to fall with um oh shoot but let's see if can you walk over it now yeah you can still walk over it so this has got to be so low i think let's see if it's like literally 0.01 if if it yeah okay so that you couldn't walk over that one. Let's see if we can walk over this. Nope. Okay, so let's 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 bump this up like a tenth at a time and see if we can find a sweet spot for not being able to walk through it, but somehow being able see oh that's that did catch us, but it did catch us so maybe a little too far to the right. Well, let's see. Oh see I I walked right over it. That's weird. That one, it failed the first time I tried it and then it, maybe we aren't, wow. Okay, so maybe we aren't resetting our fall timer threshold and actually, yeah, I don't think we are. Let me see. So, well, no, we walked right over it. Okay. Wow, I don't know. Sometimes you can walk over it. Oh my god, oh my god. See, that's 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 what I want from it. Like I want it to be like, oh crap. A am I going to actually d die here or can I escape? Like that's the feeling I want. Oh my Oh yeah, and then okay. So what we might want to do is is also shift shift the AABB collision just by a couple pixels cuz if you look at like like my character sprite here see how the collision for this character goes past where the character is and same with the pit. The pit as like some empty grass stuff. So if my toe is like one more pixel down, this would like trigger a, a gravity suck. See like that. So like it probably shouldn't trigger a gravity suck even though, you know, we weren't in the hole. Like it shouldn't pull us from that far away. So let's shrink this down a bit so that it, it doesn't unrealistically pull us. What up Magnetonics, how's it going? And welcome. Sorry, I couldn't read that one. 
I'm gonna call you Poss. Welcome in, welcome in. Yeah, well let's just shrink the AABB collision for our pit. And then it should be a little friendlier there. So if we go into our pit and it is right here. Okay, so we don't want to do a true AABB. Hey, thank you for the follow, Poss. I appreciate it. Welcome in. Um, this is always a little hard for me to wrap my head around because the true AABB makes perfect sense to me, but we have to shrink our bounding box for our pit. So we don't want to check... We can either do this only on, um, oh, okay, nice. Hey, where are you headed for vacation? Is that going to be, is it, is it like a, an actual relaxing vacation or is it like a obligated family vacation, if that makes sense? <laughs> yeah, dude. Hey, you can, if you got a laptop, you can sneak in some game dev at night under the sheets. <laughs> Okay, so we're checking if the left side of us is smaller than the right side of the pit. So we need to check if, you know, we need to give ourselves a little bit of a buffer here. Now, I already did make, I've already solved this problem before and I used a edge buffer player constant. So we could do that. So instead of checking the very left of us, the very left of our player, rather. Okay, nice. Hey, that should be fun. That should be really cool, dude. I hope you have fun. That's awesome. So, yeah, let's modify... If the left side of our player... Plus the side edge buffer player... So, we give ourselves a 3 pixel buffer on the collision detection for the left side of our player. And then if the right side of our player plus the same side edge buffer player is greater than the left side of our pit, and then the, oh lordy, then the top of us, then the top of us plus the side edge buffer player, I think, would have to be smaller than the bottom of the pit and the bottom of us this is where we would do a minus side edge buffer player so the bottom of us would have to be bigger than the top of the pit I feel like we yeah we're seeing if the left side of us plus I think this this first one would actually be subtract because we're trying to prove a collision here. So the left side of us... No, it would be a plus. Yeah, plus three. That point would have to be smaller than the width. So yeah, this would be a plus. But then the right side of us would have to have the minus here. Okay, so now we should have a three pixel. Hey, Aaron TV, welcome in. Okay, let's see. We shouldn't trigger the fall if we're right here anymore, and it looks like we aren't. So we've got a three pixel buffer on all sides. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, that's feeling much better. Exactly. Yeah, Aaron, so like this is, yeah, this is my, Link's Awakening is like one of my favorite games of all time, so. I'm definitely ripping off Link's Awakening in a lot of ways. Like, look at the flowers, right? <laughs> and the pits, I mean, come on. But we've got we've got different stuff. We've got magic spell casting here. And we've got um, animal animal entities here. So we've got a little gecko that we can cleanse and they can attack us. What we do need to do upon falling in a pit, we are subtracting our health. 
but we need to um, spawn flashing, I think, um, and make us invincible. I, I think the damage flash does make us invincible. Um, so we could, I think, I think I like that, that we would come back flashing like we just took some damage. Oh, nice. That's awesome. What, what, uh, engine are you working in? Yeah, I'm curious to see what, what you've done. Yeah, I, I'm coming up on four years of programming experience in general. RPG in a box, never heard of it. I'll have to look it up. Okay. So yeah, let's 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 see. I think it's our damage flash. Let's see when we get hurt. When we get hurt, we play our sound, damage flash gets true. So what happens? with damage flash exactly. We have a flash duration and a flash timer. And if our entity is a damage flash, we're gonna deduct our timer. If it's smaller than zero, we're not flashing anymore. And we reset our flash timer. And okay, so all we should have to do is either upon, yeah, upon a respawn from a, from a pitfall, uh, you're literally mental for the game you're making for a first time. Sorry, I don't know what you're talking about with the, um, dude, it, game making is tough. It took me, yeah, it took me two years to make my first simple game. Like, I mean, I made Pong, and Flappy Bird in like a month or two. But then my next game after Pong took me two years. And then, yeah, it is it is very difficult. I think all we need to do is, is turn our player to damage flash once we fall into the pit. But we don't want to do it right when we fall into the pit. We want to do it once we come out of the pit. Nice, dude. That sounds awesome. I love the, I love the eight-bit style and 2.5D sounds sounds cool. Okay, so wherever we reset to our checkpoint positions here, this is where we want to become flashing. And then I think I also, or damage flash, damage flash becomes true here, but we also, I think this graveyard timer should be shorter, like half a second or, or maybe even like a third of a second, but we'll see. And we should be flashing when we come out of this pit. Oh no. Why did that mess up? the old way I thought oh no why is that happening <laughs> why what I changed two things at once and I'm thinking maybe the timer is screwing that up maybe not the damage flash what the heck okay so the graveyard timer getting changed to 0.5 is screwing up our respawns for some reason. Okay. Well, what's the what the hell's the difference? Whether we respawn Yeah, if we're in the graveyard, we set our X and Y to be off-screen. Then we increment our graveyard timer. If our graveyard timer is greater than a second, then we become no longer in the graveyard. We move our position to be our checkpoint positions. We allow our tween to pull us in. So why is it that changing this messed up our tween allowed? I don't know why that would be the case. What the heck? 
I don't like that I can't tweak this without breaking breaking the respawn. Okay, well let's put damage flash back on with the one second graveyard timer and let's let's just see if the damage flash looks accurate. Okay. See, like we want the damage flash, but we want to respawn a lot quicker than this. So something's going on. Tween allowed, okay. Tween allowed is true. Yeah, we shouldn't be colliding. This is so weird to me. I don't get. We should never tween this value uh, unless we're colliding with a pit. And we reset our position here. So we're no longer colliding with the pit. So I don't get why tweaking that time would make us respawn out of the pit. Or, or respawn into the pit when it shouldn't. What the? Because it, it, it loads us. It loads us to the checkpoint position. I can see it placing us there for one frame. And then it just wants to tween us over here. So maybe there's like... I don't know what's going on. Why would changing the time affect whether or not we're being tweened back into the pit or not? Now, one thing I'm noticing is that the tween is one second, and any time this is lower than one second, it seems to crash. So I'm kind of thinking, if, it, like, I'm curious if we put a 0.9 here, and then look what happens, it screws up, right? It, it spawns us back in the pit. But if we were to change the tween to be a 0.9, What does it do? It doesn't screw up. I don't like this because, um, oh yeah, I'll whip out, I'll whip out the old band hammer, dude. I mean, hey, Katron, you want to be a, a mod? Like, I'll just mod you up if you don't mind. Oh crap! I almost made this guy a mod. Here, I'll. Hit him with the old band hammer. Is it? Is all you do is uh, the mod command? Is that what you do? Oh, nice. Okay, I think I think I did it. Thanks, homie. Like no pressure, no pressure. But if you're if you're chilling and you wanna whip out the old hammer. Okay. So something is just weird with our anytime our tween timer or anytime that I don't get what's happening here then. I think we might I really don't know what's happening. Timer.tween is a is a library um, function from the knife utility library or whatever. So I don't exactly know how this is working. I just know that this is the time you, you give it, and then you give it a, a thing to manipulate. So we're manipulating our player, and we're manipulating our player's X and our player's Y, and we're turning them into the pit's X and the pit's Y over the time. So like that's the only way I know how to use this function. But the faster we make this tween, the faster we will get sucked into the pit. So see how it, it yanked us into the pit. And we don't want it faster than that. I mean, like, we don't want it faster than a 0.9 or a, or a 1. I like the slow kind of pull you in. Like that, a 0.9 feels pretty good. It might make it harder to escape. So 1 kind of felt like a sweet spot. But what's so weird is that if we... 
if we have a graveyard timer smaller than the tween timer, it doesn't reset our position correctly. So like here, it'll fuck up. Yeah. So I'm wondering if there's a way we could kind of restart our timer dot tween or something. Because I feel like I feel like this number is getting carried over. Or yeah, I don't know. It might be time to whip out the old documentation. As much as I hate to say it. Let's see. This has got to be the most boring stuff to do on stream, right? Just looking at documentation. Okay, so we're looking for the tween. Duration, definition, timer. So yeah, timer.tween takes 10 seconds to complete and modifies the stuff. Oh, timer.clear. Maybe we need that. Optional group of timers to clear. Clear all timers from group timers. Okay. So yeah, we should just timer dot clear um, right here, I think. So if we clear our timer there, I'm hoping we can fix that. Oh, <gasps> did that really just work? Look at us. Looking at the old documentation, fixing our problems. What kind of what kind of crap is that? Okay, yo, I mean that looks like it works. So we should be able to. Um, I know, I know the, yeah, the forbidden text. Yeah, I whipped out, blew the dust off the old forbidden texts. I I didn't think it. I thought I was gonna be squinting at documentation for 15 minutes so that's why I didn't want to do it but um, I think the timer tween being one is a good speed for the gravity suck into the pit then I think our respawn should be something like 0.2 or 0.3 let's see what 0.3 looks like and we're looking for the damage flash and to be respawned at the checkpoint nice that looks pretty good yeah does that, what do you guys think, like, how fast to come back from that? Should we wait a little longer to bring us back? Or does it make sense to kind of bring us back that fast? Because also, I'm kind of thinking if, if geckos or whatever are, like, hitting you, colliding, making you bounce, and then you fall into a thing like this. Oh. Oh. Um then spawning too fast might plop you right inside of another gecko entity or something. So we would, why does it do that? What, <laughs> why does he do that? He just kind of like, didn't fall. I, I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, maybe I'll give it a little more time before the respawn, but I love the damage flash and the damage flash actually prevents us from being injured. Uh, any further so like I, I believe we don't check for collision if we're damage flashing but let's see if we go up here and get damage flashed and then try to walk into them yeah see how we can kind of push them and we only lose health once we're not flashing so it prevents us it doesn't prevent us from colliding with them but it prevents us from taking knockback and getting damaged and then that should kill me, which we'll have to have a game over, a game over score. If we have no hearts and we die, I've got the sound in there, but we'll have to add a, a game over or a you died or something. Um, I, I do want to check out. I don't like if we look at our checkpoint, our, our checkpoint position is so fast. So it's like the last spot you were at right before you initiated a, a scene fall. 
So I think I want to change our checkpoint positions to be every like two seconds or so. Um, I think it might be in our player class. Yeah, not point two, but let's do point three. So now if we look at our checkpoint positions, that's, okay, not point three. I think we want actually three. That might be too much. Yeah, that's too much. That's too much. Maybe every one second. Let's see. So our checkpoints get changed over time. So the idea is if we start, or if we're over here, and then we walk, well, it caught us. Like, the idea is that it won't always bring you back right to the pit. Like, see there? It spawned us back here. So I think I, I, think I want that because if we come from this angle and fall right in, it spawns us over here where we came from and a little bit out of the danger, right? So if there was, if there was a, well, I guess if something knocked us in the pit, it, this method would spawn us right around where that entity was. So we might have to work something out by the time we have, why does it do that? It, it does that every once in a while, it just gets stuck and then doesn't fall. I don't know if that has to do with the pit proximity. I don't know, it's it's pretty good. I think one second is pretty good for this. But we do have to make sure we don't put a pit. Well, I don't know, I guess what we could do is, is as soon as we init a current map, we go ahead and assign the current position right into the checkpoint position. Because if we look at right when we start the game and we look at our checkpoint, it's a zero, zero until that first second passes. So like if we were to walk onto a screen and fall into a pit within one second, it would reset it to a zero, zero, which isn't right. So we, we, might, we might have to, upon a map init, just go ahead and populate the, the checkpoint positions with the current X and Y of the player. And then I think we'd want to do, let's see, let's test if we can walk straight over the pit now, or if we fix that, let's see. Oh, it does catch us. Okay. It does catch us. So I guess the question is, can we escape the pit once we're being pulled? Wow. I don't think we can. Okay, so I think what we want to do right now, we're we're changing to become falling if we're within the pit proximity. But I think what we want to do is we want to hold off on that if three inputs are held. So like if you're if you're fighting the pit or whatever, you can't technically fall. Well, we'll see, we'll see. Because that might make it impossible to fall if you hold three or that would make it impossible if you hold three inputs, but but the, the timer tween is going to be pushing you. Oh, no way. You just left. Did you come up with an excuse or anything? You're just like, sorry, I, I just, I'm not here to teach you, man. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's go find where we trigger are falling, right? So falling trigger here. I think we only want to do this if our input list, if the number of our input list is greater than two, then go ahead and become falling. Now, um, actually it, it, this would be if it is less than three. So two or less then go ahead and become falling. So what I'm going to do is just test a falling and yep, we get fall. But now I'm going to hold three inputs while I'm in the tractor beam. And we don't fall. Which gives us enough room to, to look around before we freaking fall. So that's not quite it.
Yeah, that's not quite it. Oy. But we, you know, like, we had this fixed, but that meant that, um, that you can walk over the pit without falling. You gotta make dinner for the family even though they are not home. Oh, you have have it ready for them? I chucked some um, chicken thigh into the crock pot with some chicken tiki masala from Costco, that sauce. So, uh, like, my house is smelling so good right now. But it's not gonna be ready for another couple hours. I really like that. I think that looks awesome. But we can't... Oh! We just escaped the pit. I just saw us escape the pit. Okay, well now we can still... We can... You can just fuck around and walk right on top of it. Well, for the most part. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, of course, you gotta make dinner for the family, of course. I'm sure he understood. Shoot. Wow. So yeah, look, we can still, we can kind of like jank it and walk well. I like that you can't always get away with it. Like, if you stop walking, it, it'll tractor beam, it'll tractor beam you and pull you into it. Oh, and if you stop walking while you're walking into it, but you can kind of walk diagonally and get, get away from it. Oh God, but not all the time. So maybe, yeah, it's hard because I don't know what the appropriate amount of being able to jank it should be, you know? I do like that you can kind of cut the corner there and not fall in. And that once the tractor beam has started, it's harder to get out of it. But let's... Maybe let's tweak our constants a bit more with the uh, proximity. Okay, so this is a, a 3 and a 0.1. Let's go down to a 2 and a 0.1 and let's see. Can we walk right over it? Yeah, we can. Does it make it easier to escape once we're pulled, though? No, it doesn't. So let's... Yeah, shoot, man. I, it's a tough balance, because we... In order to trigger a fall, we have to have a fall timer threshold of super low. But that means... That means we can't escape the pit because the tweening is so strong. So either we can slow down the tweening just a bit. Shoot. Well, the tweening overwrites our input. Yeah. Wow, that's too fast. That's too fast. Yeah, it's almost like, I think if we were to print up our dy, um, it would be a value of like what whatever walk speed is, but that doesn't actually change our x position. So nothing to do with the keys would actually save us from falling in the pit. Whoa, we can walk diagonally. Oh gosh, you can walk diagonally over it. See, I, I don't think I like that. Let's try speeding up speeding up the uh, the timer dot tween a bit. Yeah, let's speed this up to 0.9 and see if that might change anything. I don't know, maybe we just... Okay, so that 
that catches the diagonal walkthrough, which is good. Well, no, it doesn't. Yeah, we got to catch the diagonal walkthrough, but then we really can't. I don't know. It's almost like maybe once we trigger a gravity, well, because the thing that's triggering the tweening of our value to pull us into the pit is what? It's, it's whether or not we are within the, whether or not we're colliding with our pit. Okay. So this is just overriding our X position. So like no matter what our DX or DY is, we'll still get stuck here. So if we wanna escape the pull of the pit, we'd have to do a timer dot clear in a certain time frame, like, or, or like upon a certain condition. So maybe, I, I kind of think if you do like a mad dash, you know, like if, if, if once, if once this gravity tractor beam is started, if you press a total of four or five keys, maybe that triggers a timer dot clear, which will stop tweening your value. And that gives you a chance to, or that would, would make you escape from the pull. So it's kind of like if you get pulled in and you kind of spam the direction keys. Um, and it's like, that's not something we tell the players or whatever. It's just like, if you, if you panic and try to input a bunch of directions to try to get out of the pit, then you can technically escape. Like that's the only way I'm thinking if, if the timer dot clear does that sort of thing. So like maybe we can test we can say if love.keyboard was pressed. And we can say um, was pressed and we want, let's just do um, down or yeah, let's do up. So if, if up was pressed, then we're gonna go ahead and clear our timer. So we're gonna pull up the forbidden scripture here. In timer.clear if up is pressed. So I'm gonna see if we stop tweening if up is pressed. Yeah, it let us escape. So I think what I want to do is say, if our input list is three, go ahead and clear the timer, which won't prevent us from falling if you hold three inputs, because holding three inputs actually stops you from moving. And I did that because it's hard to determine which direction the, the player is supposed to be facing when you press a whole bunch of different keys. So if you hold three, you actually stop moving, which if, if you hold three, Oh man, yeah, see that's jacked up. Maybe I don't know. Let's see if we if we just clear this upon two directions being held. Um if the number of our input list is equal to two, then go ahead and clear. So let's see. If we're falling, we can fall. And if we're falling and we hold an input, um it doesn't clear it. Wow. Why? Okay. Let me just test this a little bit more. We can walk right over it, which should not be possible. Okay, this is not functioning how I thought. So, I don't know if, I 
thought that would work. Okay, so like see how we get tweened and then if we hold up, it'll just cancel it. I thought it would cancel it if we have two inputs being held. So, okay. Let's see. Okay, so up still cancels it. And if we walk straight across, we, we can still walk straight across. So first of all, that's screwed up. I'm going to leave this commented out. And then I'm going to go to our globals again. And I'm going to change this to point 0.1. And actually, we would want a bigger proximity if we want to for sure trigger the fall or speed up the threshold. So let's see. Okay, so now we are triggering. We can't just walk right over it, which is cool. It it doesn't it doesn't move us to the center of the hole, which I don't technically dislike, but if you try to walk across, you almost fall outside the hole, but Oh, what the heck? We can walk. We can walk straight above it. Oh my gosh. And then we just escaped. Holding down, we escaped. Okay, so maybe... Why is it that, why is it that we can walk up through it and not down through it? Oh. I guess it depends on the pixel perfectness of it, right? Yeah, we fall if we're right there. But we don't fall... Okay. I don't know. I got, like you can kind of just Yeah, either either we shrink, you know, either we shrink um the collision detection again or we're just okay with it being a little jank like that. I think for right now this is totally fine. Uh, there are times where I've been able to escape it even by pressing down well, yeah, we took off the timer dot clear upon an up press, so yeah. Okay, see, like just like that, I was able to escape it. I can't like recreate escaping it, but also I can't do that on Link's Awakening either. I've tried to like perfectly escape the pit in Link's Awakening, and I can't always do it. So I think I like that. It's mostly going to kill you, but also you can kind of walk over it. Oh, and and or get away if if you happen to get lucky or the the timer tween gods are on your side. So yeah, I don't think I want to do this timer dot clear. Maybe maybe I leave it just for just so like we can see that that was what we did to tr to try to fix something. Um, what we did is we changed our collision to be, what, after our graveyard uh, respawn. We added a timer dot clear to the end of our respawn so that we don't get tweened into the pit. And then that's where we moved the, the tween is after our player position reset. I don't know if that was strictly necessary now that we did the timer dot clear but that did seem to help us fix some issues. And then we modified our hits collision function so that it wasn't um, so greedy for pulling us into the pit. And then we're only, um, we're incrementing our counter and that counter is what's actually um, counting for our respawns, our checkpoint respawns. So what I'm saying here is I'm saying 
If we're not in the graveyard and we're not currently colliding with a pit, go ahead and increment that counter. And that, that basically ensures that only, only our player's position, if we were in a safe location, um, gets stored as the checkpoint position. And then we only render our entity if we're not in the graveyard. And we tweaked our proximity fall and our timer threshold so that we couldn't just walk straight across our pits. But um, that I'm, I'm pretty happy with that functionality. Now, the only thing we do need to consider is when... What up, Real Rev? How's it going, dude? It's cool to see two Typhlusions in there. <laughs> um... Yeah, we, we have to we have to consider if there were a bunch of geckos that knocked us into the pit, then our checkpoint would load us right where we were when we got hit essentially. We do have some invulnerability because of the damage flash, but it would be a dangerous spot to spawn into, so uh, we'll probably have to come up with that by the time by the time our game has a pit and enemies on screen at the same time, I think that's when we worry about that problem. Not right now, but it shouldn't be that bad. Um, we're gonna commit with a message saying we added pit respawns or player, player respawns after pitfall. And damage flash with faster respawn times. We also, you know, tweaked tweaked the and fixed the pit respawn bug, but that's a good enough commit. Anyways, um, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll be back tomorrow. We'll work on some more stuff. I'm curious if we've got any team members to raid um let's see what jitspo's up to he's always working on some cool stuff he's doing some good dough stuff so we'll just raid jitspo hey real rev thanks for stopping in good night katron i hope your class gets better uh it's always nice to see you rev peek, peek in so thanks for stopping by we're gonna raid jitspo just so we can spread some game dev love over there. And then I do, and I still am going to record the uh, the trailer for the channel, the Twitch channel trailer for the game. So I'll, I'll have to record that, and then um, we'll be posting that at some point. And then I am going to have some special guests on who are programmers, web developers, or game developers. I'm going to start to have a series called Focus Hour where... I talk to some developers about real projects. So the only problem is I cannot figure out how to live stream it with the screen sharing and everything. So it'll be a pre-recorded thing that I'll edit together and then I'll probably stream it as a pre-record onto the channel and post it on my YouTube so that people can check it out. But that's coming up, that's in the pipeline. I got two guests lined up and it should be real good fun. So. I'm excited for that. I hope everyone has a great night and thanks for hanging.